About half a year ago, there was a video uploaded by a Japanese player talking about a Smash 4 tech called Bido. I didn't think much of it when I first saw it, but only recently did I really look into it. And it's actually pretty interesting. Since the translation of the original video is quite hard to understand, I'll try my best to break it down for you guys here. Bido completely revolves around a specific control scheme which requires you to have your second joystick set to special. Your R button set to jump, L set to shield, ZR set to attack, and ZL set to special. Those four things can be mapped in any order you want, as long as it's on those four shoulder buttons. As for X, Y, B, and A, map jump, grab, attack, and special move on there. It can be in any order as well. I'm showing the pro controller because the extra shoulder button will come in very handy. You can use the classic controller or gamepad as well. The GameCube controller works too, but there'll be some constraints, as you'll see later on, since it lacks an extra shoulder button. To activate Beto, you must have your shoulder special button held down. In my case, it's ZL. An easy way to do this is press shield, then ZL, or during a recovery move, or hit stun. It can be during any action as long as special is pressed and held. With that done, you'll notice your right joystick won't be outputting a special attack anymore. Rather, it's now a directional input. To be specific, a directional input that will only register for one frame. This in turn will make many techniques that require frame-perfect inputs much easier to do. Just a heads up, pretty much every Beto tech I mentioned will involve holding down the special trigger while you perform it. You can of course resume regular controls by letting go of it at any time. And because I'll be covering a lot in this video, I put timestamps as well as text for the controller inputs all in the description if you want to skip to a specific thing you want to see. With that said, let's begin. Perfect pivoting is made much easier to do by using Beto. After holding down the special trigger, flick the left stick forward to initiate a dash, then hit the right stick backwards. Make sure you flick your left stick fast, and don't hold it, or else you'll turn around after the perfect pivot. After you've got this down, you can do a sliding spot dodge. To do this, perform a Beto perfect pivot, but immediately roll your left stick down and hit shield at the same time. If successful, you'll spot dodge, while being carried by the momentum of the perfect pivot. Next, we have the crouching perfect pivot. It's the same input as the sliding spot dodge, except you're just holding down. This of course allows you to crouch and retreat at the same time, which can be especially beneficial to characters that have low crouches. From the crouch, you can shield, attack, and more depending on the situation. If you do a crouching perfect pivot on a platform, you'll be able to move while falling through, which can open up for some unexpected approaches. Beto allows you to instantly dash attack out of a crouch or a crawl, which you do by crouching with the left stick, then flicking the right stick forward and pressing attack at the same time. This can be used in conjunction with your crouching perfect pivot to potentially mind game your opponent. Spot dodging straight out of a crouch or crawl can be done as well. Hold down on your left stick to crouch, then hit up with your right stick and shield to spot dodge. With regular controls, you have to return to neutral position before you can do either of these actions, which is a bit slower. Normally, you can only smash or tilt out of a perfect pivot, but with Beto, you can do both. Simply do a Beto perfect pivot, then instantly roll your left stick in the direction you want to attack, then press attack quickly for a smash attack, or a tad bit later for a tilt. Here's a neat little tech, called a quick step. Dash forwards, then backwards really fast with your left stick, as if you're about to dash dance, then instantly flick forward with your right stick. Quick step brings your character a bit forward, which can have its uses. By doing a quick step immediately after fox trotting, you'll be able to attack right out of it with minimal delay. Ever dreamt of reining your opponent with pots off the edge? Well, now it's a reality. Stand beside any edge and tap your right stick forward, then press attack. Rinse and repeat. This isn't exclusive to villager of course, it works with any dash attack. Wall clinging and wall jumping off the ledge is nothing new. But with Beto, you can do it frame perfect with ease, which gives less time for your opponent to react. To do this, hold on to the ledge first, hit back with your right stick, then instantly hit your left stick towards the stage, then jump back and attack or air dodge. Instead of going back on stage, you can also edge guard using this, like with Sheik's Fair. If you ever had trouble ledge trumping, Beto will make it a piece of cake. If you're running, right after you leave the edge of the stage, hit down with your right stick and towards the stage with your left stick at the same time. If you're standing right beside the ledge, tap your left stick away from the stage, then instantly hit down with your right stick. Now let's talk about some basic movement that Beto can make more optimal and quicker to execute. 
First off, the ability to convert walking into running seamlessly. With normal controls, you'd have to return your joystick to neutral position before you can run, which causes your character to stand for a bit before the run animation starts. But with Beto, after you tilt your left stick to walk, you can instantly run by hitting your right stick upwards. In similar fashion, you can do a forward roll seamlessly out of running, walking, or crawling, start running, then hit up with your right stick, and shield at the same time. It works the same for walking. You can stutter the run of characters that have short skid animations without putting your right stick back to neutral position every time. To do this, simply run, then hit up whenever you want to halt the run for a little bit. With Beto, you can control the dash speed right off the bat. Hit your right stick forward, then tilt your left stick immediately after. The slower you tilt your left stick, the slower you will run. Beto also allows your character to do a standing turnaround without moving from her spot simply by hitting the right stick back. This can make turnaround grab out of shield, turnaround attacks, or turnaround aerials much easier to execute without accidental movement. You can also do an instant turnaround after a perfect pivot as well. Now I don't know if there's much use for this, but down tilting back and forth is a Beto exclusive tech. To do this, start off with a down tilt, but keep your left stick held down. Then as your attack is about to end, hit your right stick back, then hit attack. Do the same thing except back the other way, then rinse and repeat. Now for reverse aerial rush. I've never covered this on my channel, but normally this is done by dashing forward, hitting back, jumping, then doing a back air. Using Beto, all you have to do is dash forward, hit back on your right stick, then jump and attack. As a result, the reverse aerial rush is executed a bit faster. On a side note, you can also combine a B reverse with a reverse aerial rush, which can be a substitute for wave bouncing if you have trouble doing that. Normally, when you do a forward jumping aerial, you have to roll your joystick down in order to fast fall it, then roll it back up if you want to dash forward afterwards. Beto allows you to do all that without having to move your left stick at all, so that you can maintain your horizontal momentum. Let's use Mario's back air as an example. Short hop, back air, and keep your left stick held forward. Then right after you reach the climax of your jump, hit down on your right stick to initiate the fast fall. If done correctly, Mario will dash forwards immediately. In a nutshell, this Beto tech grants you the ability to fast fall your aerial whenever you want, while giving you full control of your horizontal momentum. Extended dash dancing can be optimized using Beto. With the help of the second directional stick, you're able to control the length and the speed of your extended dash dance with much less effort. To do this, flick the right stick forwards, then immediately tap the left stick backwards. If done correctly, your character will foxtrot backwards. As the foxtrot ends, do the same, except to the other way. Flick your right stick forwards, then immediately tap the left stick back. Rinse and repeat. Well, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I understand this control scheme is a radical change, but my goal in this video was to explain the potential this one enables for those who are willing to invest enough time to master it. I'll link the original Beetle Tech video in the description. With that said, I'll see you guys again soon.